Welcome. This is a lesson on maximum likelihood estimators. It's a two-part lesson. In the first lesson, we'll introduce the ideas and notation. In the second part, we'll do an example and finish up with a summary. The idea of maximum likelihood estimators is that given some data, such as y1, y2, all the way up to yn, so potentially n observations, that come from the same distribution and they're independent. We use the notation I, I, D. Independent, that's the first I, and identically distributed. That is, they come from the same density function for a continuous case, or the same probability mass function in the discrete case. Since they're independent, we can multiply these ideas. We use a capital pi to symbolize that we're multiplying the density functions or the mass functions. And from that, our goal, ultimate goal, is to estimate the parameter or parameters of the distribution, either the continuous density or the discrete probability mass function. Again, the idea, given some data, We want to find the parameter, it could be plural, or parameters, we use the notation theta, such that we maximize the likelihood Or probability is another way to, to say this. Maybe not as correct. But we want to maximize the likelihood or probability of the observed data. What I mean by that is again, given that we observe this data and we have the likelihood function, we have to find the value of the parameter that maximizes the likelihood or maximizes the probability of getting that observed data. So notation that's going to help us. First of all, the likelihood function. There's two different notations for this. First one, and they both look like conditional. The first one says the likelihood of this data set, y1 through yn, given theta or theta. The second notation, which I prefer, is the likelihood of the parameter given the data. The reason I like the second notation better, it makes us think that the data is given and the parameter is unknown, and our job is to find that. Now the way that we find this likelihood in the case of, let's say, continuous, is again using the idea of independence and identically distributed we would take the density for y1, given the parameter, times the density for y2, given the parameter, etc, etc, all the way through yn, given the parameter. And that is the likelihood function. In the case of the discrete, we would use the probability mass function. So again, the notation of the likelihood function is given the data with the parameter. Sometimes We shorten the notation and simply write likelihood function is a function of the parameter theta. And that's the notation and idea of maximum likelihood. Let's now go to some useful ideas that are going to help us find these estimators. Again, first idea for independent and identically distributed data, which you'll see 
uh, indicated by the idea of, of random sample. If you see the words random sample, we're talking about independent and identically distributed data. We form the likelihood function In this case, I'm going to do a discrete as the product of either the density functions, in this case for the discrete, the probability mass functions. Y sub i given theta. That will be the, one of the first steps is identifying the probability mass function or density function and then forming the likelihood. Second, this is an important idea. For a, a strictly increasing function, in our case, the natural log, such as natural log, the maximum of the natural log of the likelihood function where again L is the likelihood function. The maximum of the log likelihood is the maximum of the likelihood. Since it's strictly increasing, if a value of uh, if y1 is greater than y2, then the likelihood of y1 is greater than y2, and likewise the the log likelihood. I'm sorry, the uh, log of y1 is greater than y2. So maximizing the log likelihood will maximize L. The reason that's important is back up here we're doing a product. If we took the derivative of the product, we're just going to evolve the product rule, which becomes very cumbersome. Using the natural log, we'll be able to take the derivative of sums, which is preferable. Quick review on properties of logs. Natural log of x times y. Natural log of x plus y. This is again that, that idea. Instead of taking the derivative of a product, we'll take the derivative of a sum. Natural log of x to the y. We can bring that exponent down. Again, some notation y1, y2, plus yn. We use the summation notation. i goes from 1 to n, y sub i. Product y1 times y2 through yn is a capital pi, or p, product. This is a capital sigma, summa, summation. And that's our first lesson.